ต่อใช่ไหมคะรับรองว่าหัวข้อต่อจากนี้จะต้องตื่นกันทุกคนแน่นอนเลยค่ะอ่าอย่างที่หวานได้พูดไปถึงตอนเช้านะคะว่าหัวข้อเวิร์กช็อปในช่วงบ่ายเหมาะอย่างยิ่งนะคะโดยเฉพาะนักศึกษาที่กําลังจบใหม่มีใครบ้างในห้องนี้ที่กําลังจะเรียนจบแบชเลอร์ดีกรีบ้างเอ่ยบางคนนะคะจบมาสิบปีแล้วอย่ายกนะคะอย่างนะคะน้องเสื้อชมพูนิดหลออีกสิบห้าปีนะลูกหนูจะได้เรียนจบปีอัตรีนะคะอ่าเพราะว่าหัวข้อก็จะพูดถึงนะคะวิธีการสมัครงานตอบคําถามเป็นภาษาอังกฤษอย่างไรให้ได้งานนะคะโดยเฉพาะคําถามที่เป็นคําถามที่ยากเนาะอย่างเมื่อเช้าหวานก็ยกตัวอย่างเช่นคําถามที่อย่างเชิงแอทิจูดเราหรืออะไรอันนี้สําคัญมากมากเลยเพราะว่าเขาจะวัดภูมิเราว่าแบบเรามีความเห็นยังไงมีคนเป็นคนมีทัศนคติอย่างไรแล้วเราจะตอบยังไงให้น่าสนใจค่ะสําหรับเวิร์กช็อปนะคะในช่วงบ่ายนี้นะคะนอกจากที่วิทยากรของเรานะคะจะได้อธิบายแล้วนะคะก็ยังมีการจําลองสถานการณ์บทบาทสมมุตินะคะให้ทุกท่านได้เห็นภาพด้วยหลายๆท่านในนี้อาจจะต้องเป็นตัวละครหนึ่งในการจำลองสถานการณ์ของเรานะคะหัวข้อในตอนบ่ายของเรานะคะใช้ชื่อว่า Great Answers to Tough Interview Questions ค่ะใช่ค่ะก็สำหรับหัวข้อนี้นะคะก็เป็นการตอบคำถามอย่างที่พี่หวานเคยกล่าวไปแล้วนะคะว่าแบบเป็นเกี่ยวกับการสัมภาษณ์งานนะคะแหมแค่ฟังชื่อหัวข้อนี้ก็น่าสนใจมากๆแล้วยีนบอกเลยนะคะว่ายีนก็เป็นคนนึงค่ะที่รอฟังหัวข้อนี้เพราะว่ายินก็เป็นนักศึกษาจบใหม่เหมือนกันก็อยากจะรู้นะคะเกี่ยวกับทริคที่เกิดใช้ในการสัมภาษณ์งานนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นก็เออก่อนอื่นนะคะเราต้องขอเรียนเชิญค่ะผู้ใหญ่จากทาง AUA ค่ะที่มาของสถานศึกษา AUA ก่อนนะคะแล้วก็ขอเรียนเชิญคุณสุมนสุรทินค่ะผู้ช่วยผู้อำนวยการสอนภาษา AUA กราบเรียนเชิญค่ะขอเสียงปรับมือด้วยค่ะจะได้ตื่นเนาะสวัสดีช่วงบ่ายนะครับก่อนอื่นต้องขอขอบคุณทุกท่านที่ได้กรุณาให้เกียรติสถานสอนภาษา AUA นะฮะได้มาร่วมกิจกรรมกับเรานะครับคือจริงๆแล้วสถาน AUA เราเนี่ยก่อตั้งมาปีนี้ก็เป็นปีที่62กว่ากว่าแล้วก็เกือบจะ63แล้วนะฮะก็อายุมากนะฮะคือเราเนี่ยอยู่มานานแต่เลยค่อนข้างจะเก็บตัวนะหลายๆท่านก็มาบอกว่าทําไม AUA ไม่ประชาสัมพันธ์อะไรเลยก็ต่อมาเนี่ยในช่วงหลังๆเนี่ยเราก็เผอิญได้มีพันธมิตรที่ดีนะครับก็คือทางบางกอกโพสต์ได้ดึงเราออกมาจากหลังบ้านนะเราแอบนังสอนหนังสือกันอยู่หลังบ้านก็เป็นโอกาสดีที่ทางบางกอกโพสต์เนี่ยได้มาจัดกิจกรรมร่วมกับเรามาเป็นพันธมิตรกับเรานะครับเดิมท่านที่อาวุโสหน่อยก็จะจําได้ว่า AUA เนี่ยมีกิจกรรมร่วมกับสังคมมาตลอดนะครับเดิมเรามีห้องออริทอเรียมเป็นห้องประชุมขนาดใหญ่ก็จะมีกิจกรรมดนตรีอะไรต่างๆให้ผู้คนได้เข้ามาชมกันเป็นความบันเทิงมีการเล่นละครอะไรต่างๆมากมายครับต่อมาเนี่ยทางสหรัฐตอนนั้นเรามีสตังนะเพราะว่าทางสหรัฐสนับสนุนต่อมาเราต้องเลี้ยงตัวเองครับกิจกรรมเหล่านั้นก็หายไปบ้างนะฮะแต่ครั้งนี้เนี่ยก็ได้เป็นโอกาสที่ดีต้องขอขอบคุณทางบางกอกโพสแล้วก็ M2F Job นะฮะที่ช่วยกรุณามาเป็นเพื่อนกับเราแล้วก็ได้มาทํางานร่วมกันนะฮะวันนี้ก็โชคไม่ดีเพราะเมื่อเช้าฝนตกหนักหลายๆท่านวันนี้จองกันไว้แน่นมากนะครับเรายังห่วงว่าอ่าที่นั่งยังไม่พอครับสําหรับเนื้อหาสาระในวันนี้เนี่ยคิดว่าจะเป็นประโยชน์อย่างมากนะครับคงนึกเกินได้ว่าทุกๆท่านเรียนจบปริญญาเหมือนกันเวลาสมัครงานก็ส่งเอกสารเรซูเม่อะไรก็ว่ากันไปดูจากกระดาษฮะนึกไม่ออกนะครับเลือกไม่ถูกที่สําคัญคือจะได้งานไม่ได้งานก็คือต้องมาเจอหน้าค่าตากันนะครับแล้วทุกคนก็คงยอมรับว่าสมัยนี้เนี่ยบริษัทส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นระบัดบริษัทข้ามชาติหรือไม่ก็ติดต่อกับต่างชาติเพราะนั้นภาษาอังกฤษนี่เป็นเป็นสิ่งที่สำคัญการที่ท่านมารับมาสมัครงานแล้วเขาเรียกมาอินเทอร์วิวเนี่ยไม่ใช่สวัสดร้อยคนแล้วเขาเรียกทั้งร้อยคนถูกไหมครับสมัครร้อยคนอาจจะเรียกเพียงแค่ห้าคนสิบคนถ้าเขามีเราอุตส่าห์โชคดีเขาเลือกเข้าไปแล้วให้เข้าไปอินเทอร์วิวแล้วปรากฏว่าไปทำอะไรที่ไม่ได้เรื่องในราวนะฮะถามถามอย่างตอบอ
วันนี้ก็จะเป็นโอกาสที่ทางวิทยากรของเราเนี่ยจะได้แนะนำนะแต่จะต้องยอมรับนะครับไม่ใช่ว่าวังจบไปวันนี้แล้วทําได้เลยคงเป็นไปไม่ได้นะฮะแต่ว่าก็จะเป็นเกรดเล็กน้อยเป็นตัวอย่างเป็นแนวทางเพื่อที่ว่าจะได้ไปฝึกฝนต่อนะครับงานที่ดีมันมากับคู่คู่กับภาษาอังกฤษเป็นส่วนใหญ่นะครับคงไม่ใช่เสมอไปแต่ก็เป็นส่วนใหญ่เพราะฉะนั้นวันนี้ก็ต้องขอขอบคุณทางบาขอโพสอีกครั้งนะฮะที่ได้กรุณาประชาสัมพันธ์นะฮะเพราะลำพังตัวเราถ้าเราจะจัดเนี่ยไม่มีปัญญาที่จะไปลงโฆษณาบอกพวกเราให้ให้ประชาชนในกรุงเทพให้ทราบได้หมดได้กว้างขวางขนาดนี้นะฮะก็ถือว่าเป็นโอกาสดีก็ขอขอบคุณอีกครั้งนะฮะแล้วก็ขอเชิญพบกับวิทยากรของเราแล้วก็กรุณาร่วมกิจกรรมนะครับอย่าอายเพราะเช้าเห็นแล้วยังมีหลายๆท่านยังอายอยู่กล้าแสดงออกครับเพราะว่าเยี่ยมโดยเฉพาะท่านที่กําลังคิดที่กําลังจะสมัครงานหรือคิดว่าจะเปลี่ยนงานอะไรก็แล้วแต่นะฮะครับขอบคุณมากครับขอบคุณค่ะขอเสียงปรับมือให้กับคุณสุมนสุรทินค่ะค่ะค่ะพี่หวานคะตอนนี้นะคะยินก็รู้สึกว่าอยากจะฟังหัวข้อเวิร์กช็อปของตอนนี้มากๆแล้วนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นก็เพื่อไม่ให้เป็นการเสียเวลานะคะเราก็ขอกลับเรียนเชิญคุณจูนแม็กโมเลนนะคะเป็นวิทยากรเพื่อให้ความรู้กับเราในหัวข้อวันนี้เลยดีกว่าค่ะเชิญค่ะ Thank you. Thank you. Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. It's not turned on yet, so you've got to be. One second. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me at the back? There's people right at the back. Can you see me? <laughs> Hello. You can come forward. Okay, uh, thank you, Simone. I, my tie is not good enough to catch what he said. I hope you said something nice. <laughs> yes, okay, good. Okay, well, uh, welcome to AUA. This is the second of the afternoon of the workshop. In English, this part of the day is uh, of the presentation is called the graveyard shift. Why? Everybody's had lunch. They're tired, sleepy, and uh, anyway, okay. Welcome. Okay, this is uh, this is the title of my presentation: "Great Answers to Tough Interview Questions." I've been asked to talk to you about job interviews. Now, can you put your hand up if you have had? Present perfect. I d you don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> you have had your teeth taken. No. If you've had a job, an interview in English, a few people, <laughs> a few people in English, what was it like? How did it go? Was it okay? Difficult? Stressful? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're going to talk about that question. That is, you know, that is the number one question of any interview in the world. Is tell me about yourself, so you know that, so you can rehearse. Yeah, you can try it out, but that's it's true. But what I'm going to try to do today is talk to you about um, job interviews and help to, you to think about interviews. Try to make it less stressful. Okay, this is this is me. I'm. Um, This is my. I'm an English teacher. I did my master in education, so it's a master's degree, 2008, uh, in London, which is where I'm from. But I, before I became a teacher, I was a social work manager in a hospital in London for 20 years, and I interviewed all the time. Yeah, I was interviewing for social workers. In, um, then I've been an AUA uh, supervisor here at AUA for seven years. And I've been uh, recruiting teachers, so a lot of what I do is interviewing in English, looking at resumes, checking, uh, talking to people. So that's my experience. But where I started my first degree, what year was that? <laughs> like, like 30 years ago, uh, 1988. 1988 was in psychology, and I've always been interested in psych. What is psychology? <laughs> study of what, though? Study of 
not not heart. Not but yes, your your brain. It's really the study of behavior, trying to understand why people behave the way they do. And this is this is kind of important in job interviews, understanding what people are thinking and why they behave in a certain way. So so that's my background. I'll tell you what I plan to do today. Okay, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, looking for jobs. Where do you look for jobs and how, that is, how the world's changing. I'm also going to talk about writing resumes or as in, in the UK, we call it CVs, curriculum vitae. So writing, how you do it, okay, and, and some tips for doing this. Then I'm going to come on to talk about interviews and how to answer the most popular interview questions in, uh, in, in, in English. Yeah, so uh, how are we going to do that? Now, I'm, I'm going to draw on this research. There was a guy, there's a guy called... Jorgen Sundberg, who, and his website, his organization is called the Undercover Recruiter. And they do a lot of research in America about recruitment. And uh, they did this survey 2014, so just last year. They surveyed 2,000 bosses on a whole range of things about interviews. And I'm going to quote them. Lots of really interesting statistics, and it'll tell you a lot about interviews. Okay? So that's that's my plan. Now, what we're going to do... It's already quarter past two. <laughs> okay, so we will have a break, we'll have a break in, a, in, in a while. Now, this is the first thing here. Importance of a handshake. Now, what, what, this, what I want to talk about is, ha, is this, the idea of being interviewed by people from a different culture. Okay? Now, how important do you think handshakes are in an interview. Kind of important, very important, what do you think? Very important, I think it is very important. In the West, the handshake is more important than you think. Okay? The handshake, I know, I, I prefer the Thai, why? I think it's much nicer, I think. but the handshake is important. Why? Why is it important? It is about confidence. Handshakes are about confidence. And um, I'll, show, I'll show you the statistic. 26% of bosses, this is from the survey, 26% of bosses, they reject candidates because of a weak handshake. Really important. In the West, that is how you can tell how brave someone is, how confident someone is. Now, um, what, what is your handshake like? <laughs> I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. You're going to volunteer? Okay. Um, what I want you to do, so shake my hand. Okay. Ah! <laughs> no, no, that was good. So what you've got to do is you've got to have quite a, you see that firm handshake, and then like that. Now, often what happens is, is that people's handshake are weak. It's like this. That is not a handshake. That is just touching palms. Yeah, so, so strong, stronger, stronger, a little bit. Yes, that's, it. that's the one. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, my volunteer. I tell you what. I tell you what, you get a prize for, um, for me. So, no, no, not why, not why. Handshake, handshake, handshake. Well done. Well, that's good. That's good. No. <laughs> Can you change? No. It, it, let me see your handshake. No. You can't. <laughs> now, what I want you to do is I want you to practice your handshake. So, but what you can't do is sitting down. I know there's this thing about maybe ladies can sit down. <laughs> but I want you to stand up, and I want you to shake the hand of the person sitting next to you. Okay? So, if everyone stand up, Shake the hand of the person and introduce yourself. Ah, oh, yes, good handshake. Nice, firm grip. <laughs> really important. You should practice. Go. 
you should go home tonight and practice with your mother. <laughs> really important that you, your handshake is firm. If it's weak, 26% of bosses said they reject people if their handshakes are too soft. So practice, practice your handshake. This is, uh, so these kind of statistics helpful. But if you are, when you walk through the door, a handshake will be first. So remember this. Remember, okay. <clears throat> even, if, <laughs> even if you hurt them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's look at some other statistics. How do you look for jobs in Thailand? Where do you look? It's nearly always websites, not newspapers. <laughs> And the online one, yes, of course. The vast majority of jobs are found online these days. Yeah, so, um, so how do you find a job? This is interesting. 18 million people in 2014 found their jobs on Facebook. Jobs offered on Facebook. Facebook is perhaps the biggest market for jobs now. Biggest universal market. The other way, I know this is not popular in Thailand, but... Eight million people found jobs on Twitter. When I say to my students, I give them my, I give them my Twitter account, they're like, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. But Twitter, really important. Eight million people found jobs on Twitter in 2014. And the other one, which LinkedIn. Ten million people found jobs. You know you get emails, or oh, will you join my, link, my, the, my LinkedIn? You, can you join? It is important in the job market. 10 million people found jobs through LinkedIn. So oh, it's online, but don't forget Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Okay? These are, these are now the biggest professional networks for job finding. This is a, there's a question, how important is your social media posts when you're looking for a job? 93% of recruiters said that they look at your social media. What does it mean? They look at Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. So if you are applying for a job, it is likely that the recruiter will look at your Facebook page. Okay? And now think about that. What pictures do you have on your Facebook page? <laughs> Li yeah, exactly. Lifestyle pictures. What pictures, though? Is it? I'll, show, I'll show you examples of what you should be careful of. So make sure your posts and pictures. <laughs> that uh, there's something that your future employer would like. The, the thing about Facebook, Facebook is still a new thing. I know p young people, they think, oh, Facebook. In my life, it's only 10, 15 years ago that nobody used Facebook. Now everybody uses Facebook, including recruiters. What they will do, and I know because I've done it, if someone applies for a job at AUA, we look at their Facebook page. It's part of the application. <laughs> so, if you have a picture like this, <laughs> or like this, do not put it on there. I mean, I can't say, I can't say to you, to <laughs> let me put those up again because they, they're fun. <laughs> These are real Facebook pictures. So somebody has decided to put a picture of themselves drunk and vomiting on Facebook. But if I'm trying to give this, would, I, would you give this guy a job? No. no. So you should go home, look at your Facebook page. People think, oh, Facebook is only used for social reasons. It is not used for social reasons. It's used for professional reasons. And your bosses will look at your Facebook page. Particularly, you know, it, it's, that, it's true now because I've done it. 
you want to get a good idea of your next employee, Facebook will tell you. Okay? Be careful of Facebook. Okay, I'm going to talk about writing um, resumes. Now, this, this is a, a, an unusual thing to say. Recruiters are people most of the time. What do I mean, most of the time? What do I mean, most of the time? Why not all of the time? Now, there is computer software which will scan and look at resumes. There are robots, really, or computer logarithms which look at, because if you were a recruiter, you may have hundreds, thousands of resumes, and there's not enough time to look at them. So now there is software which will scan resumes and look to see, it will look for certain trigger words, look at qualifications, for example. It will search your qualifications. If you are not qualified, reject. Automatic rejection. Okay, so recruiters are not always people. All right, so there is, there are some, now there's some uh, resumes which are rejected because of software. But, in the main, recruiters are people. And I really want you to, this is the most significant point I want to make. Do not forget that re uh, recruiters are human beings and they have prejudice, they are biased, they have problems, they may have a bad day when they're looking at your resume. <laughs> they have to look at many resumes. It is boring. Yeah, they, you don't forget that you're trying to convince another human being that you're the right person for the job. And if you, if you forget that, if you put too much information, for example, the person will not read it. It's just too boring. Okay, it's too much. So what they'll do is reject. <laughs> I know because I've done it. I've done it. If you're a recruiter, how many people here are recruiters, bosses? Is anybody recruiter? There's nobody read a resume. Because if you, if you, when we advertise for a job here, we advertise for a manager post uh, in, in the academic department. 200 applicants for one job. It's hard work to look through resumes. It, is, it takes a long time. So what I know that in the end you say, well, that person, you know, 10 pages, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And recruiters all over the world are the same. Um, but the human beings, what you have to do if you're applying for a job is convince another human being to notice you out of hundreds of applicants. Why you? Really difficult. It's... it's it's not, it's, not, it's not fair, but uh, it's true. How long do you think a recruiting officer spends reading each resume? How, how long? Two minutes, any other? Three minutes? Three minutes, anything? <laughs> An hour and a half? No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is the research. Five to seven seconds. Now, this is an average. This is an average. <laughs> it's not a huh? <laughs> did, you, did you fall off your chair in surprise? <laughs> but five to seven seconds, it's not a long time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. <laughs> five to seven seconds. Why? How, well, if this is an average score. What, what does it mean? This is, as an average score, five to seven seconds. What, they certainly do not have time to look at everything. But if you have two, um, 200 applicants, how is it five to seven seconds? Qualifications. So what you do is, 
Look at the first one, qualifications, no. Nope. Next one, qualification, no. Nope. This is like two seconds. But then you see someone, ah, qualifications. Ah, okay, let's read a bit more. Let's look a bit more, a bit longer. So average five to seven seconds. So 200 applications, most are two seconds. Some you look at, you read fully. But you've got to think, this is terrible. How do you get noticed? And how do you convince another person to think about your resume for more than seven seconds? What, what do you do? I mean, smile. smile. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, but you're not there. This is no, just your resume. Picture. picture. Okay, well, let's, let's do that. Yes. Absolutely. So you've got to do it in a certain way. It's got to look a certain way. I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. Um, oh. I will come back to this. How important, how, impo how important is your email address, do you think? What do I mean? But if, you see, and we do, I do this all the time, you get emails from people who have not thought about their email address. Crazy emails. You know when people first write, they'll think, well, what shall I call my email address? Something unusual. And so they, they do things like this. Unprofessional email addresses are the reason for rejection of 76% of resumes. So if your email address is crazy, it will be rejected. It's likely to be rejected, 76%. What, what, that, what does that mean? So if you have an email address like this, I love beer <laughs> at Yahoo. No, you, you laugh, you laugh, but so many people put this kind of email. We had this guy, big boy. <laughs> uh, and you know, anything, uh, email addresses that say, I love to party, I love girls, all of these things. Because people choose their emails. But if you see this, recruiters say, no way. Facebook picture, <laughs> email address, <laughs> it's for a recruiter, they're saying, well, who, who is this person? I've got 200 applicants. I'm going to look for reasons to reject. I've got to do it. You cannot, you do not have the time to read 200 uh, resumes. So you look at people's Facebook pictures, no. You look at their email address, no. Oh, I've only got 50. That's how you manage your time. I'm sorry, guys, if this is disappointing, but it's real people, managers making decisions. You, you might have fantastic applicants, but if you have this email address, you will not get a, into an interview. All right, so think about what clues you're giving the recruiter. Um, Let's see. Now, this is, so your, your idea. Should you attach a photo to your resume? Yes, everybody say, everybody say yes. Just with the person next to you or around you, why? Just, if you can, just talk with the person. Should you, yes or no, why? Just talk about it for... One minute while I get a drink, while I have some beer. <laughs> what do you think? Yes. Do you think yes? What do you, what, let me go to the back a bit. Where, can I move away with this? What do you think of the back? Yes or no? Yes, anybody say no? Oh, come on, you got to, you say no? No? <laughs> anybody say no? Well, I tell you what, I say no. I say do not put a photo on your resume. Okay? Do not, 
I would say, why do people say yes? What, what are the reasons? What are the reasons that people say yes? Because a lot of resume is a letter. Yes. Yes. Uh, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, you, you will. You can tell someone's appearance. You can look at their face and if they're smiling. There's a problem, though, with photos. Uh, this is the problem. You remember, this is a survey of 2,000 recruiters and bosses. If you attach a photo, your chance of getting your resume thrown out goes up to around 88%. Attaching a photograph is dangerous. Why? Why? That's my, no, I asked that. I'm asking the question. Why? Why? Why do I say that? Remember, this is a Western, this is a, a, a for, a American and British and Australian survey. Why do you think people don't like photos? Discrimination. Absolutely. Absolute discrimination. If they see a picture, you're more likely, the person who's looking at it, even if they, they say, I am not sexist, I am not racist, I am not, I'm none of these things, they are. And they will look at your photo and they say, too old, too young, I don't like her hair, <laughs> smile not good enough. 88%. Really dangerous to put your photo. I know it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but it is true. If you put your photo on the resume, you're likely to be rejected. If it's for an American job, it's for a British job, you don't do it. Yep, in, but in Thailand, you, this is the, what I'm talking about is being interviewed by foreigners. Now, I, I don't know the rules. I don't know the rules. I've, you know, if you're applying for a Thai job, maybe it's, it's the expectation, but not in the West. If you're applying for a job and it's going to be an American interviewing you, um, my phone, my phone um, if it's an American interviewing you, this is true. Okay? You do not have to put your photo and the advice is do not. Okay? You, it, it, do not is the answer. Okay. What's next? Uh, yes, okay. This is what I said to you before. The software, there's, uh, software will reject about 75% of all applicants. If it's used, about 75%, that means the software finds a problem on your resume, not qualified, or something about, uh, there's a problem, and 75%, okay? Okay, I'm going to give you some tips for writing resumes. Oh, and you can talk about this actually. How many pages? Oh. Only two. <laughs> We're doing one and two. Two pages. Two pages may be too much. Half a page. <laughs> <laughs> A name and age, not photo. <laughs> not photo. <laughs> the, the, always the advice is keep it short. Really, you should keep it to one page. I know people find that very difficult. I, I know two pages is what people want to do. But I tell you, most recruiters will no, not look at page two. It's got to be really short. Imagine 200 Resumes. Sometimes, I absolutely, this is absolutely true, sometimes people will give 10 pages. 10 pages. They give everything they've ever done, every experience they've ever had, all the pictures of their girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the recruiters don't care about that. They, they want to see one page and they only want to read absolutely relevant experience. Only the briefest of information, short information. I'm saying one to two pages, N never more. 
never more than two pages. Um, ah, yes, this is a, now I know that this, breaking my rule, this has got a photo. You can't really see this. But this is, this is an example of a resume. This is only one page. It should look a little bit like this. This is good, I think, but it's got a photo on. That's the problem. <laughs> but um, he's very handsome as well. So, <laughs> I can't show, it's private. It's all right. But, uh, but um, now, the most, one thing, just one thing to say, there's so much research on these things about how you should look at this on, on, online, look at the tips for writing resumes. But if you're writing a one-page resume, the most important information should be here, not here. Why? They, they won't have time to read. If you don't put it here, they'll be like, next. I t I, I, you've got to think about these 200 applicants and, the f and people are putting irrelevant information at the top. You have to look at that. There's lots of research to say that where, if you're reading a page, where does your eye fall? And if you're an American, if you're British and uh, uh, English speaking, you, you start here and it's top, maybe top left, you'll start to read and you look. The most important information should be right at the top, not at the bottom. You increase your risk of being rejected if the information is lower down. It's just the way it is. The next person will have put their best experience at the top, and that will catch the eye of the recruiter. Your information, which was down here, and your parents' address, was here or something crazy. Nothing to do with the job. You're applying for a job. You're applying for a job um, in a bank, and you put down, oh, I worked at McDonald's two years, flipping burgers. People say, I, who cares about that? But it's at the top. And so people will say, oh. people will say, oh yeah, this. So I, they'll look at it and they'll say, well, this guy's from McDonald's. Reject. Put the bank experience at the top. Ah, okay, this, at least this person worked at a bank. Now I'm going to read a little bit further. So if you're, what you're trying to convince the recruiter is to look at your second page, <laughs> to read more. And you can only do that with a hook. Okay, and that should be here. <laughs> okay. Put the most amount of that. Should, obviously, this thing, I, I, I did put this here, but it's, it's obvious, but you'd be surprised most resumes are now sent by email, so it doesn't really, doesn't really apply. But it should, if you are sending it by snail mail <laughs> or through the post, it should be on good paper and you should never fold your resume. Yeah, it, shouldn't, it should look professional. It should look good. Put it in on one sheet of good quality paper in an A4 envelope that's got a hard back. And then the person, oh, this looks good. If you screw it up and throw it through the window, it's, it doesn't look right. So that there, but most of, obviously by email now. So um, not to worry. But if you're printing them out, print them on good quality paper or card. Make it look fantastic. Okay. Not scrap paper. Okay, it should be. Uh, uh, this, is, this is the other thing. Why I think this guy's resume is very good is because, I'm, I'm saying one page for a resume, he puts a cover letter. And the cover letter is very relevant for the job he's applying for. Okay? But you, if you have a resume, you should revise it every time you apply for a job. It shouldn't be so generic and you just send it to 200. If you do that, the human being receiving your resume will feel upset. 
and feel hurt. Because he will say, this guy is applying for 100 jobs. Why should I be interested in him? Or why should, why should I give her a job when she's applying for lots of, and lots of jobs? The problem with this is, when people are applying for jobs, they often send an email to 100 places. And the problem is, when you get the email, it tells you how many other email addresses it's been sent to. It looks terrible. It looks like you don't care about this organization at all. My advice to you is revise your resume, make sure it is relevant for the job you're applying for, and if you're sending it by email, only send one email at a time. Do not attach it to a hundred other email addresses. It looks terrible. It really, it really does. It, and people look and say, why should I care about this person? He doesn't, she doesn't care about us. Sometimes you get, you get letters from people, and it will say, dear school, or something like that. It, will say, it won't be personal. The best way to send a resume is to find out the name of the recruiter and send the letter personally to them. This is just a kind of obvious stuff, but if you, if you know who the personnel officer is, write that in. Dear Mr. Dear Mr. Smith, I'm attaching my email. If you say, dear sir, it's like, okay, to everybody. You should make it personal. This is for uh, tips for, for writing resumes. Okay. Oh, yeah, get someone to proofread your document. Make sure your English is excellent. Or you could take a course at AUA. <laughs> as to, <laughs> A writing course at AUA. But um, if you make grammatical errors in your resume, what do you think happens? Rejected. Really? I, I, you know, if you're a recruiter, you think this person has not taken time to even proofread. You know, and so get someone to proofread. Get your mom to help you. Maybe not, I don't know. Okay, um, do I want to do this? No, oh, okay. Describe yourself. Describe yourself in three words to your partner. Three words. If you're applying for a job, how would you describe yourself? What would you say? Handsome, athletic, <laughs> romantic. <laughs> Cheerful. Yes. Diligent. Diligent. These are good words. Good words. Anything, any other things? I want to get words from over here. Responsible. Remember, so adjectives to describe you, anything? Energetic. Energetic. Anything else, anything from the back? What would you, how would you describe yourself? How would you describe yourself? Uh, funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that, I guess. If you, if you Strong-willed. Strong That's a bit scary. That's a bit scary. So you'd say, I'm responsible. Responsibly, because remember you're describing yourself, so adjective would be, I'm responsible. Yeah, you could you say this. On time, what, <laughs> what would be the, so what was the adjective? Do you know that? Punctual, punctual, good at timekeeping, something like that. I'm going to show you some things. Now, the, it, this gets kind of complicated, but this is the English language part of this, uh, okay? These are, um, what language should I use on my resume? This is, um, what are the worst phrases, do you think? They're not really the worst phrases, just uh, uh, they're on everybody's resume. Okay, the, these, these phrases, I would say, do not use. I'm a go-getter. It <laughs> What does it mean? It means... You go and you get something. It means you're very active. Go-getter. It means you're active. These are really 
If, if I read these on a resume, I'm like, oh, no, that's terrible. Um, I'm the best of breed. <laughs> that mean, what does that mean, best of breed? <laughs> that's a dog. It's a dog. But people put it on their resume, saying, I'm the best of my class, or something like that. Best of my... Um, I'm a hard worker. Um, these were the, I'm a team player. Now, I know that people say, well, what's wrong with that? These phrases are used too much in resumes. Okay, so the, the bosses, 2,000 bosses said, we hate this language. It's really boring to read this again and again. Team player, um, there's a couple more. I'm a go, I was the go-to person. Now, there's something about these in English, what, what, is, what is this, what, what kind of language, what part of speech? What part of speech is it? They are nouns, okay? I am a go-getter. I am the best of breed. You're turning yourself into a noun, all right? So if you remember anything of this, it's, this is the point. You, remember, you are turning yourself into a noun. And in English, it's not the best idea turning yourself into a, an object, okay? Um, turning yourself to, into a noun is a mistake, all right? So when you're writing your resumes, don't think about nouns, and it will help you. So what do you, what do you say? I'll give you some good ones. Oh, this is, these are good. I have achieved. I have managed. I created. I negotiated. I mentored, I trained. These are action verbs. Okay? And it describes things that you have done. So saying I am a, a, a people person, or I am a team player, it doesn't give any evidence. It doesn't say what you've done, it just says, well, I believe I'm this. These words will, will give experience. I, um, I mentored two people in my team. That is direct experience, and it tells your employer, oh, okay, they, they trusted this person to train other people. So these verbs, so not nouns, think about verbs. I did this. I did this in my job. I, they trusted me to be a trainer. They tr um, I've managed a team. Perfect. I have managed a team. It's direct experience. And if you're an employer, that's what you're looking for. Always, you're looking for people with experience of these tasks. I've achieved them. Negotiated, fantastic. I negotiated a lower price on this. Wow, we love this person already. Okay, so action verbs. Okay, that's the end of my <laughs> writing course. But the, this is, if you, if you study this, if you study writing, these kind of tips are really important for selling yourself. I help people um, write and create their statement of purpose for universities. And it's exactly the same idea. Don't describe yourself as a noun. Describe yourself with action verbs. I've done this. It gives experience. Okay, so... Job interviews. Ah, yeah, okay. We're not going to, okay, we'll, we'll have a break in a minute. Um, job interviews. Now, this, this is great statistic, these ones here. How do you get through a job interview? Okay. Um, how long does it take? Oh, God, yeah. How long does it take for a recruiter to make a decision? Five minutes. I think that's, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> One minute, one minute less, less. Well, it, it, three. If ten seconds. If you if you ask bosses, they say this. But so, well, some research says six seconds. That means. No, in the interview. In the interview. Okay, so in the interview, when you walk in the door. 
One, two, three, and they'll get out. Out. Forget it. Six seconds. I think that's a bit pessimistic. I think that if you ask bosses, they will say a bit longer. But that is, this is, there is some, there's good evidence to show that people do make a decision pretty quickly. You know, people don't call themselves sexist, but they are. They'll say, oh, no, no, it's not because you're a woman. It's because you haven't got this. Hmm, okay. Six seconds. It's a problem. Recruitment is discriminatory. It's, it's, but that's the, uh, the way it is. But if you ask bosses, they say, oh, no, 15 minutes. It's, it's just not true. Uh, okay, at the interview. Most interviews last about 40 minutes. That's the average, 40 minutes. Recruiters say they make their minds up in 15 minutes. Okay, so 2,000 uh, bosses, when they are asked, were asked this question, the majority say, about 15 minutes it takes me. So 15 minutes into the interview, they've decided. But the interview lasts for 40 minutes. All right, so the rest of the interview is just, just chatting. But they have made up their minds in 15 minutes. Now, uh, other, other research says 90 seconds, other research says 6 seconds. So... It is somewhere between those. I think 15 minutes, 15 minutes is quite optimistic. It's good. The beginning of the interview is the most important thing. You're trying to convince people quickly. If you fail to convince them within 15 minutes, forget it. They're, they're not listening. All right, so it's, uh, it does become important. Um, ah, yeah, this is interesting. What you say accounts for only about 7% of the decision. So you're, I know everybody thinks, oh my God, I, you know, what am I going to say for the interview? But it's only a small part of the decision. What does that mean? That's um, crazy. Common mistakes. This is, this is um, from uh, people's experience. People who play with their hair, I haven't got hair, I can't, <laughs> can I play with your hair? <laughs> the people who play with their hair like this, brush their hair in an interview, don't do it! It's pe people like, I don't want you to be doing that. I know people get nervous and they start, but 21% of recruiters say it's a problem. Don't do it. Brush your hair before. <laughs> No eye contact. Pretty, I, you know, if somebody never looked at you, it's pretty bad. If someone's like, yes, <laughs> no, I don't know that. <laughs> it looks terrible. It means you've got no confidence. How can you meet clients? How could you sell things if you can't look at someone? Eye contact, really important. Only six, I'm surprised it's that low, 67%, but about 67%. Um, Lack of a smile, and then thirty-eight percent. Very, yeah. I think it's. I think it's low. In Thailand, I think be higher. I think so. Whereas in America, if you're like, no smile. Um, bad posture. What is posture? How do you sit? Oh, it's okay. How do you sit like this? Can you can you carry a book on your head? <laughs> if you got, if it looks like you're like some slouched. I haven't got a chair. But if you're slouched like this, or if, oh no, <laughs> but if you if you look really, uh, you know, lazy, looking, slovenly, it, it's called in English. Bad posture. Thirty three percent. This is this is what mistakes. Uh, bosses say, this is a mistake. Bad posture. You've got to sit up straight, look as though you're listening, and attention. Hmm? <laughs> Crossing your arms like that. A problem. That's a mistake. Don't, in, in the interview, don't sit like this. Why? What does it make you look like? Like that. You don't do, do that. <laughs> what, why, why? What does that do? 
closed, yeah, closed, or hiding something, defensive. Yeah, you maybe have secrets that you don't. <laughs> so I'm not telling you. It's true. It makes you look nervous. And they remember they don't. They want someone who's confident and open. So always be thinking. Okay, I'm open. Even if you're a psychologist, I tell you. I tell you. This is the tip. If you're a psychologist, it's always good to show your palms to people. It makes you look. Um, open. This is a tip. If you want to meet a partner in a bar, romantic partner, show your palms to people. People trust you. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Like, <laughs> no, but you go like this. You say, I think this. I think this. I think this. Well, when I first thought, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it makes you look open. Okay? In the animal kingdom, they do it as well. They show palms for submission and for, trust me, monkeys. We'll show them. Um, anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> too many hand gestures. Too much of that. Too much of that. And they'll say, no, I, you know, who is this guy? You know, it looks too much. You've got to be calm, relaxed, palms, palms, and, but that's it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, handshake. We've already seen that. 26. Uh, 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 uh. Um, fidgeting. What does it mean, fidgeting? Who can show me? I haven't got a seat. Um, can I have a chair? Okay, fidgeting. Okay, so this is fidgeting is like is like this. You would move around, <laughs> move around. So if you fidget, it's moving around too much. You've got to look relaxed. You've got to look confident. You've got to look at peace with the world. Okay, <laughs> mm. <laughs> meditate. <laughs> If you're too moving around, it makes you look nervous. I, it's not fair, any of this, because you're going to be nervous in an interview, but you've got to pretend to be calm. That's uh, just the way it is. There's a, there's a couple more common mistakes, more mistakes that people make. This one is not fair, okay, but it's true. Quality of voice. If you're like this, hello. hello. <laughs> Yes, I'm very good at that. <laughs> You've got to have a good voice. You've got to be able to show confidence in your voice. If you're like, yes, I'm very confident. <laughs> it doesn't work. Grammar. It's, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I think um, this is, remember, for not for uh, speakers of other languages. This is for generally for interviews. But if you're grammar, if you're an American, and you're interviewing another American, and the grammar is good, it's very bad. If they know that you are from a different culture, it's OK. You know, they, they're forgiving. They understand these things. But it is still important. Being too nervous. You, the interview is the only chance you get to show what you can do under pressure. OK? If you can't, if you can't cope with the interview, how will you cope in the real job? So showing that you are calm and confident is the, is the way they say, ah, in the job, he, she will be like this. She'll be great because, she, look, she's got confidence. Ah, the way you dress, absolutely 55%. People say definitely. Uh, oh, too trendy or fashionable. 70%. Too fashionable. Too fashionable. <laughs> no, not so. Um, oh, oh, and this one, this one here. Lack of knowledge about the job. 47%. You've got to know the job you're applying for. But it's, this one is interesting. Too trendy. 70% of people say, no, I don't want someone too fashionable in my office. 
Um, what should you wear? I'll just we'll, we'll quickly go through this. Um, no, we don't worry about this. So we won't do this. We haven't got time. But I'll tell you what you should wear. Um, well, what do you think? What should you wear? Suit, shirt, yeah, something on the top. Not, not totally. <laughs> but we've already seen that you shouldn't be too trendy, not too fashionable. Yeah, you shouldn't look too good at this. Um, these are the, this is the question you should ask. What is the culture of the office? If you wear a suit, to an office where everybody is wearing shorts and a t-shirt and <laughs> you look silly. You should look at the people, look at the people who work there and see what they wear, try to dress in a similar way. If it's very casual, it's okay to come to the interview in a casual dress, but you, you have to think about this. If, if people are wearing shirt and tie, you, you must wear a shirt and tie. You must look, the, really the test is you should look slightly better than people in the office, but only slightly. If people are wearing a suit, you shouldn't come in a, in a most expensive designer suit with a, with a waistcoat, no, and a flowers, no, <laughs> and a top hat, <laughs> no, you should look, you should look the same. They want to have to find somebody who can fit into the organization. If you look too good, they'll say, this guy is not going to stay here long. He's far too trendy. Yeah, it makes other people uncomfortable if you look too good. Um, this, is, this, is kind of, uh, this is kind of easy for men. Men can just wear a shirt and a tie. Easy. But the real issue is for women because you have so much more choice. <laughs> crazy amount. How, how good do you want to look? I think the main, the main advice is uh, too fashionable is a mistake. When is it a mistake? If you're, um, if you're applying for a job at Prada or at Louis Vuitton, you might want to look really good. You want to look fashionable. You want to look part of the fashion industry. But everything else, no. Just look okay. Um, avoid bright colors, print, heavy print, this, uh, uh, that's the, the advice. Um, what you should wear should be the least important part of your presentation. Dress pretty simply, bland clothes, and really what, then what you say becomes more important. If you, if you look fantastic, like you've just come from a nightclub or a wedding, <laughs> they'll be like, wow, they look so good, I couldn't hear what she was saying. I never listened to her because she looked so fantastic. You it really should be pretty simple clothes but, and just smart enough uh, for the office. Okay. Oh, how should you behave in the interview? Ah, oh, this is, a, I'm going to end on this one before we have a break. There's new research that says, this is um, psychology, you should mirror the interviewer. What does it mean? It, it, be careful of this because it can look great. But if the interviewer does this, you should do this. You should copy the interviewer. Now, this is, this is not really research by bosses. This is psychologists have found this. That people who act like the interviewer will, are much more likely to get the job. Why? So if I'm like, if, if you're like that, Yeah, I'm, I'm showing you. I'm showing you. That's that. <laughs> Why? They think, what well, you have to come, it's below conscious level. But if you have somebody who behaves like you, you think, oh, they're part of my club. They're almost like my family is here. So if you're like this and the person goes like this, 
Yeah, they're like, you look good. What an interesting person. But you can't make it do. Not too much. So if somebody's like this, you... <laughs> no, be careful of it. But it is, that's what people have found. Think about it. If, if the person crosses their legs, you cross them. Interesting it is, but that is, there's good evidence to say that it works. You want to convince the person you're with that you're like their brother or their sister. And they'll think, hmm, I like this person. <laughs> she, can't, she doesn't know anything about the job. <laughs> she's got no qualifications, but she's like my sister. <laughs> Give her the job. <laughs> no, not that. Not that. Okay, all right, that's, um, that's enough. I'm tired now, I'm going to lie down. Uh, let's have a break. We'll have a really short break, okay, because I'm, I've only got about another 30 minutes to talk. Um, yeah, your character, but there's something else they want to know, strengths and weaknesses. Whether you're, whether you're, whether you're right for the job, you're suitable for the job. But there's, a, there's an important point here, weaknesses. They want to. They want. They want to hear if you can be critical of yourself. Critical. They, they want to know that you not only know what you're good at, but also what you need to learn. They want to. They want to know something about you to show. Ah, this this person understands themselves. Yeah. Um. Not, not easy, this question. Not easy. Because you... What, <laughs> what the problem is... Uh, so what do they want to know? This is it. He or she wants to see if you can do the job. As you said, are they suitable? How you answer this question will show how you can identify your skills and apply them to this job. Um, now, I put this as a good answer. So I'm, good, I'm a good listener. I plan everything. In detail, I showed this when I was given a new project by my boss. I had to do everything. All of, all of the answers should include experience. It sh you cannot just say, I'm a good listener, and then stop. You know, you, you can't just say, oh, I'm really good at that, with no evidence. Anybody can say that they're a good listener, or that they plan everything, but this, the second part, shows experience. Okay, so I'm really good at planning, and I did this because my boss gave me a project, and I worked on the project. Great, because you're giving evidence. All right, so uh, strengths is, is kind of easier, but you can't just leave it as a strength. The problem with this question is the second part, which is weaknesses. Because even though the question asks you for your weaknesses, do not give too many weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> Sincere is a strength, but you can't say, you don't give too many weaknesses. You know that will count against you. If you say, oh yeah, I'm always late. No. <laughs> I'm always sick, I'm lazy, I'm pretty lazy, I don't get on with people. I don't really like people. I'm rude to customers. No. <laughs> what you have to do, really the cheat of this, the trick, is to turn the weakness into a strength, turn the upside down frown into a smile. <laughs> That's horrible. But what you, so what you do is you say something like this, oh at times I can be too enthusiastic, <laughs> working long hours and sometimes running away with ideas, I really think I need to learn to slow down a bit and adjust to everyone else's pace Teamwork is so important. Yeah, so what you're saying is, oh yeah, I know that I work too hard. <laughs> That's my weakness. <laughs> I can't stop working. I work too many hours. <laughs> if, you say, if you say, oh no, I go home early. <laughs> Get it. But, so you, you have to think creatively with your weaknesses. All right, so you might say something like, you know what, I, I, I sometimes am too focused on a project. 
I like to work on my own a bit, but I need to work with the team. I'm aware of that. I need to learn this skill. And th that shows that you're willing to learn. Okay, so you must talk about weaknesses, but make them positive, <laughs> make them strengths. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's, that I think is a good answer for that one. Even if they, they see through it, they'll be like, oh well, congratulations, well done for answering that. Okay, what about number two? Uh, why do you want to work here? I don't, because of the high salary? Not a good answer. Can I just say, no. You cannot say because of the salary. Say that again, sir. Yes, you can, you can say that. The, the, the uh, location, uh, yeah, you can say that. What, what else? Anything else? Why do you want to work here? It's a good company. I think that must be the, the thing. I want to work. Good company. Um, no, yeah. So, what is the what is what is the one? Does this person know what we do? That's the first thing to say about this question. Does the person understand what the company does? Why do you want to work here? You've got to give in your answer something that says you understand what the job is. If you do that, then people say, oh, right, they've you know, done their homework. Really important, fundamental reason thing. You've got to know the job you're applying for. Okay? So does, uh, does this person know anything about what we do? Are they interested enough to have done some research? If you're not sure why you want to work there, they'll say, well, why should we give you a job? What, what is it about you that to become part of our family... We want someone who's, who's done some research. Are you applying to many jobs, or are you really interested in this one? Remember I said to you, don't send your resume to, every, to 100, or if you do, be careful of the email. But this is what you've got to show people, that actually, I'm, my whole life has been leading up to this job. I should work for you. Um, even if you've applied to hundreds, Every one of them should think, ah, oh, yes, okay, you're interested in this business. Who wants somebody who will leave in three months' time for a better job? No, you say, no, I love this place. I'm <laughs> so why, yeah, well, that, that's what they'll say, why do you love it? And you say, well, the best answer for this, so, uh, so I'm aware of this company has a great reputation for high quality work. High quality work is very important uh, to me, and I feel like I'll, I'll be right for this team. I've also heard you offer great opportunities in training and development. I'm sure I could learn a lot from you. Th this kind of, of answer is good because it shows that, that you've done some research. Now, if people are applying for universities the, with a um, statement of purpose, I always say, go to their website, find out the names of the professors. In your application, say, Professor Robinson is a lead in his field, and I really want to work with him. Professor Robinson may never see your application, but people know him, and they'll say, wow, this person only wants to work here, or only wants to study with us. It makes you stand out in a crowd. If you say, the boss, and name the boss, I've always admired him, even if you've never heard of him. <laughs> but I, I really admire the work that uh, Mr. Mr. Robbins does, and I've followed his career all my life. <laughs> but you've got to convince them that you're a match. Okay, so that's, that's how I would answer this. You don't, don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to give you this. I'll give them all to you. But after, at the end, okay, so before we go, <laughs> you've got to stay for the presentations. <laughs> Okay. Uh, number three. What are the main tasks and responsibilities? Any, what, uh, similar ideas or anything else? Anything? Do you want to know about the job description? Now, it's, that's a good answer. And I'm good. What would you like? <laughs> Plumbo, what would you like? 
Oh, oh God. My job. <laughs> He's injured. He's broken. <laughs> Thumb drive. Are you sure? You don't want to do it? Yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, both. Both. Now you can have that one. Okay, you take that. Thank you. 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 Thank there must be one with every job I'll advertise. You've got to know the job description well. Okay, so you've really got to, got to know it. Um, uh, what do they want to know? Do you know what the job is about? Um, have you done your homework? Uh, this is the main task is to lead a small team of staff and ensure that they reach their sales targets. It would be my responsibility to motivate my team and support them to work their best. This is, that's you know, a reasonable answer because you've read the job description, you know exactly what your job will be. Okay, so that is, that's kind of a focused answer. Yes. If you do that, they, they could say, well, haven't you read the job description? Be careful of asking that, you know, or oh, what is this job about? You know, because it's like, well, you don't know. <laughs> you, really, you've got to convince them that you do know that. You can ask lots of questions, but specifics about the job, I would be careful. If, if it's in the job description, what it shows is you haven't done your homework. So get the job description, read it, be aware of it. Okay, next one. Where do you fall? Quick. Uh, what are your goals? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I've, I've, the interviewer said, oh no, I don't want to tell you. Um, what are your goals? What about at the back? Carry a heart. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Save enough money for retirement and old age. Is that your, is that your goal? You can have one of these. But, I, but what else would you say? Goals? Want to be a manager? There's a risk. There is a risk to goals. Um, if you... If you say, if you say, um, I want to be the boss, <laughs> and the job is not the boss, the person you're speaking to may be the boss, and they will say, hang on a minute, you want my job? <laughs> you know? <laughs> be careful. <laughs> If, you, if you're too ambitious with this job, they'll say, no, 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 no. We want somebody to do, you know, we want you to, we want you to fry fish, not manage the whole company. You know, that, so be careful of it. But it's okay to say, at the moment, this is, I want to be this, I want to work in this job, but maybe in the future I'd like to learn and, and go up the ladder. You've got, to, you've got to make it sound, but you can't, you shouldn't be too ambitious, I think. I think there's a, there's a danger, there's a real risk in it. Um, the intro wants to know how ambitious you are, whether you could fit into the organization. This is, this is kind of my answer. My immediate aim is to work as part of this team. All right, that's what, that's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear that you're going to be the boss. Okay, to learn a job and do well. Later, I'd like to develop my management skills and learn from the experience of this organization. Perfectly reasonable to say, I am ambitious, but initially you say, no, I want this job. Please give me this job, not a future job. Yeah, that's, that's too much, I think. So, okay, five, uh, tell me about your experience. No, not both. You can't have both. Have you, got, have you got a daughter here? Have you got a son or a daughter? You want the teddy? Yes, okay. Okay, you haven't got the teddy. The thumb drive, no. <laughs> yes, your experience is really important, but the thing to say about experience is it should be relevant to this job. 
not all experience, not everything you've ever done in your life. The, the problem sometimes people face is they don't have experience. Using English, yes, I, that is a good experience for any job. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing you would say. But if, um, what have I said about this? The interviewer doesn't know how, how much previous experience. Now, this is my good answer for it. In my current job, I learned a lot about developing software packages. I've also worked as part of a team, and I really feel I can apply this experience to a more customer. For okay, that's not that good. But if you, if you, but if you do not have experience with things, I'll give you. If you if you don't have that much experience, if you don't have that much experience of things, you must apply your experience. So, for example, if you're applying to be a team manager and you've never been a team manager, you could say, I think I might. Have, this might be a later question. But you could say, oh, I love to play football. And I've learned a lot from playing as part of a team. Yeah, so you're applying something. You're saying, all through when I was at college, you say, I've never, I've never worked in, in, in this area, but I learned a lot from when I was working as part of a band. Working together, coordinating together. That's how I've learned to, to work as a team. So you're adapting your experience for this job. All right, so you, if it's nothing to do with it, don't talk about the experience. That's what I'd say. But you can always apply things. I learned to play piano. I learned to play piano. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of focus. And that's why in this job, I think I'll be great, because it's a lot of detailed project work. My piano playing experience. <laughs> Well, if you're, <laughs> but you see what I mean. You can turn things into good experience. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Number six. Uh, what do you know about our product services? Uh, 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 homework again. Homework again. Absolutely. Um, You've got to know, the interviewer wants to know, uh, to hear how much research you've done on, on, into the product. This one's, a, I like this answer. I, I was happy with this answer. Your products have got such a great reputation. Uh, they help set the industry standard. Very complimentary to the people who are interviewing you. Um, I do think that there could be more opportunities to target younger people. Um, I am sure that you could increase sales with a new marketing approach. I have lots of ideas. Yeah, so what you're doing is, yeah, yeah, I, I think I would give this person the job. What you're saying is, I know about your products, I know they're fantastic, but if you take me on, I will help you grow. I've got some great ideas. They'll be like, oh my God. You are welcome. Um, okay, two more. What makes a good team player? Uh, what do they want to know? We're going to run out of time. Team working is very important to every employer. Um, they want to hear how well you can work as part of a team. What you say is only partly important. Remember, playing with your hair, like that. <laughs> yes, you play with your hair. People are like, no, I don't like this person. Too fidgety, too concerned about their appearance. No, we want somebody who's confident, relaxed. So what you say is only partly important. Uh, what you do, what you look like, how you are with people, is the majority of the decision is made on that. Palms, palms, palms. <laughs> um, get help where you can. AUA has got some great courses. I don't, my, my boss told me to say that, <laughs> but it is true, it is true. <laughs> it is true, we help people all the time with this kind of thing, working with CVs, working with um, presentation, presentation skills. And uh, any questions? We don't have time for questions. <laughs> want, any questions? Any, anything you want to ask? Any questions? <laughs> no, no, you can't come on already. Any question? Have you got a question?
cut down. <laughs> cut it out. No, never use small letters. Never. I think it's a good idea to attach a cover letter, and but that's what I, that's what I mean about that's a very good question. Uh, that's what uh, that's what I mean about um, a cover letter should be addressed to the recruiter, and should be really personalised for this for this business, not dear to whom it may concern. <laughs> No, you can't do that. So really specific. If you've got a resume, you've got to cut it down. You've got to edit it down. Is this experience absolutely important for this job? You do not have to put every job you've ever had. Yeah, I know people say, oh, how do I explain that 20 years of experience? But you can mention something, but don't put anything else. You say, yes, short, short, short. They will not read it if you do three pages. Trust me, never. Ten pages, forget it. That's shredded immediately. So it just shows, if you do ten pages, it shows that you cannot contain your ideas. You cannot edit, you cannot contain yourself. Two pages is enough, one page is, is ideal. I think. Yes, you know, I, I know, I know. I had slides about that, and I took them out. Because I haven't got time to do it. But you, 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 they will ask you, do you have any questions? And they are very important. You should, what, I don't think there's time to talk about it. But I, if you're going to ask questions, you've got to ask really relevant questions. Don't ask how much will I get paid. You should already know that. It should be part of the... Don't, that's not the first question you would ask. You, you, I, if I were you, if you, you keep it to like to two questions, the interviewer will get irritated if you ask ten questions. And that shows... If you ask ten questions, it shows you, again, you can't contain yourself. Um, and you can find this out later. Two, I would ask two questions. One of them is, um, what is your training and development? Do you train your staff? Because if they say no, don't take the job. Really important. If the job won't train you and help you develop more, it's not worth it. That's what I, that's what I think. It's such an important, very important question. So you, I, that, that's one question I would ask. Um, you could ask specific. Don't, uh, job description t should tell you exactly what you do in your job, where you'll work. You shouldn't ask questions about uh, anything about that. But then you could ask, um, you could do, but could, I don't, I never like quest, uh, questions about that. I, I, they, should be, they should be able to tell you, tell you exactly what the job is about and what benefits you would get. That should be part of a job description, really. So I would keep it to training and development. Um, you could say things, something like, I'm really interested in this part of the work. Would you support me to, uh, if I wanted to do that? You know, I'm really interested in developing my own products. Or uh, People are like, oh, that's initiative. That's good. That kind of thing is, works well. I've got some really good ideas. Um, do you encourage that kind of thing? If they say no, don't take the job. <laughs> All right? That, that's that kind of question. You want them to demonstrate that they are good at training and that they will support you if you've got new ideas. That's, I, I keep it to two questions, that's it. But the, uh, I think that's another lecture, what questions to ask. I think it's complicated. So. Okay, we've got to stop, everybody. Um, thank you for listening to me today. Um, uh, so I've been uh, talking about these this year. Good luck if you get an interview. Okay, nice to see you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.